Curled up in a doorway, like freezing cold, wanting to top myself. There was days I wouldn't get up until like eight o'clock at night, and then I'd have to go back and, you know, not something I want to do, not something I thought I'd ever do, but being on the street to tell you survive. We all do stick together, so we all looked after each other. There's a few of the old dads missing. They've moved on to better things. I just want someone to give me a chance. Our aim is to take people in from the streets and support them. It started back in the 1970s. A small group of vicars found some homeless people sleeping in the park in Birkenhead and there was nowhere for them to go, so they decided to set up a night shelter. Until 12 years ago, we had this building, which is a purpose-built, lottery-funded building, which is for 27 people, um, five women and 22 men, which is about the ratio of rough sleeping, male to female. My name is Ryan, Ryan jo Joseph Jones. I've been here two months now. John Lochner. I've been at the yard for 29 weeks, that was. Yeah, I've been here for over three months now. It's Stephen from Manchester. I used to go around Liverpool City Centre and, you know, sit on steps and things like that. I'd have, um, I'd have sleeping bags over me, things like that, keep warm, buy them on the step. I let it get to me. Um, all I did was buy back in the car, but I check on my records. And um, I did turn into a bit of a scally for a bit. But I realised, you know, seven, five, seven years and I'm not going to stay to me. I'm not rich. I'm still in my clothes. Inconvenient. Especially walking back to your clothes down with you all the time. But I've done it before, so I knew how to look after myself. And I also know a lot of the lads who are actually in here now. And we all used to be on the streets. I would say, uh... Well, in Liverpool, really, I had my own house in Liverpool and got in a bit of trouble and I um, ended up homeless, like. Any clients that come on to the Wirral Arc are obviously given um, counselling and uh, medical treatment. Uh, as, as far as the uh, catering side is, what I do here is um, provide them with three meals a day. My job mainly is to um, increase their nourishment uh, intake i.e. to provide them with a lot more nourishing meals, but also cheap meals as to educate them for when they leave us as to how to expand uh, the food they use. Uh, we totally rely on donations. Our main donator is the Harvest Festival, which is in September. As well as feed the clients, we also uh, encourage the clients to take part in some training regimes we do now, whereas we do a, um, a level one OCN basic food preparation and cooking. The idea of that is to, again, to educate clients on um, vitamins, minerals, proper nourishment, and when they leave, is, uh, when, when we can rehouse them, is to educate them on how to spread out the costs um, to be able to provide themselves with food on minimum budgets. I've been in a hostel over there for a year, as it was after that prison thing. There's no one wants something to do, but everyone washes their hands here, then. even your family going into the doors here. And then I just jumped on a train, come up here, spent nights in a nice shelter, and just landed in here the next day. Well, like, did three week, three months here, was made homeless again, and they re took me in, like, so. So that's the story. story. You know, it's not an ideal situation for any man or woman, but it's a blue food you had, and it's warm food. And apart from that, you can get a shower here, you know. Because you can't get a shower on the street, it's quite difficult. <laughs> We're here to support the clients so that they are here when they need anybody, if there's in crisis, if they need anybody to talk to, if they need any support in attending appointments with doctors, um, drugs workers, alcohol workers, that type of thing. Other times um, we will do activities, play games of bingo, quiz nights, that type of thing in the evening. Um, we would prefer to help people move on in their lives rather than move backwards. But that doesn't stop them from coming back if things hiccup up again if they fall by the wayside, you know, they know that they can come back if they need the help. You couldn't ask for any better. You know, key workers are brilliant, staff are all right, yeah. Couldn't ask for any better, really. Well, you've got, you've got a key worker and you can go in and ask her anything, she'll help you fill forms out, she'll check everything's okay, you need a, you need a hand to go to the hospital for whatever. So, you know, they're all here to help you out. And if they won't help you out, the lads will. They're really good people, they're like family, 
can't do something to develop you. If you're doing something wrong, they'll call you an asswipe or cruel to be kind. If they really thought you were an asswipe, they'd just get your bees up and go on a hungry. That's what it is. I think they're good people, really good people. Yeah, I'd love to be seeing my kids again. You know, that's one of my main objectives, seeing my kids again, and basically to be abstinence of alcohol. You know, just want to be free of alcohol again. I'll stay here until I get a place of my own. That's my goal. Get a place of my own, get back into employment. And the artist saved me life. Because all the others is um, the best hostel I've been to. Have a go at life properly. This is for people who really need help, this one. So it's uh, obviously, remember this, the little laugh.